List view is a widget that displays a list of items in the application. In other words, list view is used to list items in the application. The list that is created and includes the items of the application can be scrolled, and there is no limit to the number of items that are in the list. List views include a list of mobile contacts, a list of emails, or a list of cities with their weather information. It is possible to customize, create and apply custom changes in list view, and all items can be placed from the simplest state in the form of text to the most complex state in the form of images, links, etc. Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech in audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a list view in Xamarin Forms. 2. Create a data model. Now let's open the Visual Studio and do some coding. List view is a view for presenting lists of data, especially long lists that require scrolling. So here is an example of populating the data using the item source property which accepts any collection such as an array or an object. By default, list view will call to string and display the result in a text cell for each row. The code looks fine. But it is very rare to feed the list view element that is static data. Most of the applications, like contact numbers or messages are dynamic, which means the value could change at runtime. So this method is not recommended. So let's modify this and populate the data in code behind. Now let's go to the code behind. First, we need to create a collection of data. There are many options to populate data into the list view element. It could be an array, object, list, etc. For now, let's use list. Then, we can set now collection to the item source of our list. Let's run the app. And here is the list, populated with names we store in our list object. Now if you look closely at the screen, there are lines below each item. This is what we call row separator. We could change its color or hide it. So back in our XAML file, If you want to hide it, we simply set the separator visibility property of the list view to none. Or if you want to change its color, we could set the separator color to the color we want. This is the basic way in populating a list to the list view element. But what if we want to display more complex data? like displaying student name, status, and an image. To do this, we need to create first a model for our data. First, let's create a folder for our data model. We put all our domain classes here, like the student list. So let's add a new class. I'm assuming you know the fundamentals of object-oriented. Like encapsulation, inheritance, property, polymorphism, etc. Let's add the property of our class. Here I declare three properties for our student info class. Let's go back to our code behind file. So instead of adding a list of strings, I'm going to use a list of students info in our list view element.
we will encounter an error here because the main page class cannot identify the student info class because it is located in another folder. To fix this, we need to include it in our header. This is the name of the folder where the student info class is located. We can now add the details. So unlike using string as the data type for our list, we created a class with three properties. Then every time we want to input new row, we simply create a new instance of the class. For now, we are using URI images and hard-coded information for our application. But in a real-world application, this data should be coming from a database, which I will be discussing in a separate video lesson. So let's run the app. Each item appear as demo.listview.datamodels.studentinfo. Why is that? Because by default, listView calls a toString method on each item in the list. That's why the Xamarin returns the fully qualified name of our class, which is demo.listview.datamodels.studentinfo. Now how do we display the name, image, and status of the students? So back in our XAML file. Let's modify this code. So here we bind our model class, which is student info to our list view element. Just like the item source in our code behind. We have an item template, which is the template for each item. Inside the item template, we have a data template element. A data template is used to specify the appearance of data on supported controls and typically binds to the data to be displayed. Inside the data template, we can use a built-in template. Or if you want to have more control over the appearance of the item, you can create a custom template. But for now, we are going to use the built-in templates. The two common templates are text cell and image cell. Here we assign the text property of the text cell to the name property of our class. If you notice our binding, we did not initialize the binding source. Because when we initialize item source here, each item object will be the binding context for each item in the list view. That we simply use the name of the property we created, which is the student info class. Another property of the text cell is detail. We assign to it the status of the students. There are other properties we can use like text color or detail color. But I'm gonna leave it up to you to experiment on it. Now let's look at the result. Here is our text cell, you can see it has a text and a detail, which is the status property of our student info class. Now to display an image. Instead of using text cell, we have to use image cell. Now let's change the image for each student. Then run again. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, 
suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson. Please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.